Here we go. Welcome to the show, Stuart. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Thank Welcome you. back to the show, actually, because you're a friend to the show, aren't you? Yes, although uh, last time it wasn't actually in your new studio here, so it's really great to, yeah. to come and actually see the new studio. It's yeah, a, a it was an fantastic setup you have here. Thank you. Thank you yeah. very much. It's all due to the wonderful work of all the team. And so, tell us, Stuart McKinley, what exact? Tell us about yourself. Before we talk about Enmus and talk about the projects you're doing, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, what you do, and how you came to be skills director for Enmus. Whoa, that's a long story. Yeah, just keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, I probably did quite well at school and the teacher said Stuart's a bright boy, you should go to university. Mum um, and dad probably never thought about that before and um, so I ended up going to Strathclyde, completed a man master's degree in manufacturing sciences mm -hmm. and engineering, uh, left there moved up to Aberdeen um, and there I really probably kind of fell in love with engineering for the first time um, and that's been a history with, with engineering is always finding out things that you just hadn't expected. So that uh, first uh, job that I had it was actually a bungalow in the middle of an industrial estate uh -huh. and there was a, an indoor swimming pool in the middle of it and so <laughs> when you finish work you could all pile into the swimming pool and the Fantastic. jacuzzi. So, yeah. well, in Scotland, an outdoor swimming pool? Yeah, up in Aberdeen. I've yeah. heard about these things, these mythical yeah. things, I've never <laughs> actually seen one. <laughs> it's got to be warm water of course. <laughs> So, and, and and over the years you've changed careers, you worked yeah. offshore, I understand. So I worked, I worked offshore for a while, yeah, I worked with a Canadian company, RLG, um, that was really interesting, that was about changing people's behaviours to mm -hmm. improve performance. Mm -hmm. um, so I worked offshore, both in a, an exploration rig in mm -hmm. the, the North Atlantic Ocean, mm -hmm. that's real waves there, none of your, your North Sea nonsense, <laughs> baby waves, um, and then latterly at next for it at Kiwi. Um, then I moved on to the uh, Sector Skills Council, mm -hmm. uh, developing both engineering modern mm -hmm. apprenticeships mm -hmm. and life science modern apprenticeships. Yes, yes. Uh, and then, which I think you mentioned earlier on, to the Engineering Academy with Strathclyde. Um, and that was about inclusivity, that was widening access, yes. helping people that, that normally wouldn't get to university to mm -hmm. actually get in and have very successful careers. Right. Uh, and then fortunately uh, for me, opportunities came up at Enmus, first as head of skills programs mm -hmm. and then in, uh, this year I joined uh, as skills director. Okay so that's a varied, it's, it's I mean it's the same kind of industry but also quite varied you've done various, various roles in your industry. Yeah I, th I think the common thread through my whole career is because there was a period of time I spent about three years with Remploy as well so mm -hmm. helping people with disabilities mm -hmm. that, that wanted to get back into work mm -hmm. so that for me, that common thread is about helping people mm -hmm. uh, and helping employers. Absolutely. Um, All right. So tell us about ENMIS, the word of the day, National Manufacturing Institute for Scot Institute Scotland. Sorry. Yeah, so, <laughs> <the> four. <laughs> 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 so tell us about it. What exactly is ENMIS? If the viewers know, if they, do, they know nothing and the listeners know nothing about ENMIS, what exactly is ENMIS? So it's a good, it's a good question, BB. Um, so some years ago, it, it was recognised that you know Scotland's very famous for manufacturing, but actually we'd got to a position where, really, as a country, we needed to invest something serious to um, support manufacturing. It, it does add a lot of value. It provides a lot of high-paid jobs, mm -hmm. uh, and it's got a very bright future. So under the One Scotland team, mm -hmm. um, that was Scottish government. Uh, and various stakeholders such as Scottish Enterprise, Skills Development Scotland, Highlands and Islands Enterprise, uh, Renfrewshire Council, mm -hmm. University of Strathclyde, all got together and invested in the National Manufacturing Institute Scotland. We're actually building a brand new headquarters. Mm -hmm. with, Heard about it. Which is probably uh, less than a mile from yourself, from <laughs> these offices, so I could, I could walk there. Uh, and that opens doors in May next year. Mm -hmm. um, oh, we, sorry, we get the keys in May next year and open for business probably around about September, October next year. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to have loads of state-of-the-art equipment in there, um, you know, additive manufacturing, digital manufacturing, uh, but also, and the, the bit I'm responsible for is the whole skills piece, so helping people upskill uh, and reskill to, um, to provide good jobs and, and stable jobs and a, a prosperous future for manufacturing in Scotland. Just adding add to Scotland's success in the yeah. future. Because thinking about, there's an old African proverb that says, men, men who plant trees who know that they know they're not going to be in the shade of, 
They know their children's children are going to are going to use them for shade by their plant trees today. So that's what you guys are doing. Basically, invest in Scotland's future today, even though you're not going to be here probably to see it. Unless you're telling me. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, it's going to go up before I pass away. <laughs> I hear I hear what you're saying. You know what I mean? <laughs> but I, I think I think you you know you're you're right because when we think about and there are some pretty exciting things happening in Scotland just now across the whole piece, but particularly in manufacturing, we've got the whole space sector. Um, and a bit of a pun, but that's really taking off. No, oh, um, <laughs> you know we, we 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 build more cube satellites in Glasgow than mm-hmm. anywhere else in Europe, mm-hmm. um, and we're actually now got companies that are building the uh, the launch platforms and and the rockets to to take those into space. We've got the whole offshore wind piece mm-hmm. coming up, mm-hmm. um, and that's going to provide thousands of jobs across Scotland. Uh, and then we have some sectors which are really big, but people don't often hear about, such as the photonics sector. What's that? Um, so photonics is really to do with lasers and, and light, and mm-hmm. it underpins a lot of the, the technology that we use today. All the internet is underpinned by photonics, uh, and that sector in Scotland's over a billion pounds a year. So it's a big sector, but just people tend not to know about I'm it. I'm sure they're happy to keep it hush hush, and people don't rush to join. <laughs> well, no, they they want to broadcast it because actually there's there's some serious skill shortages, uh, uh, mm-hmm. and they're they're recruiting for people as we speak. Mm-hmm. Um, we were at the Technology Scotland dinner through the week, mm-hmm. uh, and Leonardo, who are based through in Edinburgh, they were saying they're recruiting 200 people this year. Wow! So there's a lot going on. Right. So, what is the na- so what ha- what is that? What's NMIS got to do with Entity? What's the National Transitional Training Fund? What is that exactly? So, um, clearly, what's happened over the past couple of years wasn't in anybody's plans. Uh, you know, certainly nobody planned for COVID to happen, mm-hmm. uh, and also nobody really planned for uh, the UK to be leaving the the European Union. Well, I guess some people were planning it, but but quite a lot were. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what we discovered through that were a lot of uh, impact, particularly on many sectors, but particularly on manufacturing. So the Scottish government recognised that, uh, and to be fair, the UK government did as well, that you know this was going to have serious impacts and a number of different schemes and, in- and programmes were put in place to support the sector. For us at Enmis, we were asked to put forward some uh, propositions that could support the manufacturing sector. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, we, we did that and we were subsequently awarded funds under uh, NTTF1. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a pretty successful program. Mm-hmm. We uh, ran a whole bunch of uh, CPD, so Continuous Professional Development courses, yes. across 18 different courses. Um, things like Python programming, Code Clan, Meta Skills, uh, how to get into bio manufacturing, uh, um, you know, 3D drawing. Uh, and we also recruited 30 uh, STEM graduates who hadn't been able to find a job due to COVID and uh, Brexit, um, and we paid them for six months. Um, as I say, that was pretty successful, and we've just been awarded NTTF2, so National Transition Training Fund 2. Uh, we're very grateful, obviously, to both the Scottish Funding Council mm-hmm. and to Scottish Government for that funding. Um, and so if, if it's useful, I can tell you a bit of details about that. So what exactly, so we know what it is and what it's used for, what, how, like the, the minority communities in Scotland, what exactly, how do they benefit from this fund, like, and that's who we represent here at Jamba Radio. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and so, so National Transition Training Fund is pri- predominantly aimed at those who are 25 and over, mm-hmm. who are unemployed or at risk. And, and we know, you know, whenever there's any major disaster or catastrophe or, mm-hmm. you know, big incident like Brexit or COVID, mm-hmm. that it's the underrepresented groups that mm-hmm. are most impacted by by these kind of activities. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things we were really keen to do was to work with, um, you know, probably the, the two biggest underrepresented communities in, in Scotland, and that's women, uh, certainly in, in engineering and manufacturing, women, mm-hmm. uh, and and you know, ethnic minorities. Okay. Um, and so we are working very closely with Equate Scotland mm-hmm. and with okay. AFBE, so that's yeah. the Association for Black and Ethnic Engineers, which you mentioned earlier on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we've created a, a programme. So what we're going to do is, um, and there are two parts to the programme. Mm-hmm. So the first part is we're actually going to be reaching out to the community uh, and to say, look, if you're looking for a job in manufacturing, mm-hmm. you haven't been able to find it, we can actually provide you with some support, with some help that we can provide you with. So Equate and AFBE will be running 
uh, a one day program mm -hmm. where you can actually come along there will be role models there mm -hmm. who can talk about their journey mm -hmm. uh, into manufacturing we will actually have careers events mm -hmm. um, and so there will be uh, sessions on you know how to present and create your CV mm -hmm. so that it's most effective mm -hmm. uh, there'll be things like interview tips and techniques um, how to sell yourself at an interview and then as part of that package as well they will actually offer mentoring for individuals who want that mentoring okay. so it's a pretty comprehensive package to support the individuals the other part is just as important because it's no point in, in setting people up with all these expectations if the employers are not are then not receptive. Them. Yes. So the other part of the, the program is actually to work with employers to actually get them to um, modify their behaviours a bit. Because, mm -hmm. you know, and to be fair to employers, many of them are really struggling they're trying, mm -hmm. and they're really looking for good people mm -hmm. and often they just don't know how to, to quite do that. Mm -hmm. So we'll be actually helping employers to um, change their language, for example, in their, uh, their adverts to look at uh, people's skills and abilities in different ways mm -hmm. uh, and to talk about diversity and inclusion and how important that is um, and that will actually you know improve their performance mm -hmm. as a, a company mm -hmm. I mean I can tell you there's, there's lots of good examples of that you know McKinsey's done some really good work on looking at boardrooms that have mixed representation and mm -hmm. those companies actually outperform other companies yeah I, I can also tell you from our perspective at Enmus uh, we have about 30 different nationalities working within Enmus. Mm -hmm. um, we have three women that are on the, the senior management team. So we're not quite where we want to be yet, mm -hmm. um, but actually the, the feedback we get from staff within Enmus, and mm -hmm. we, we had a huge visioning set piece, of work, piece of work earlier this year, was that actually people really valued that diversity and, and in the, the inclusivity in the workplace. So when you say we are working to, we're working with AFBE, we're working with Equate, Things are going to happen. Things are gonna, they're going to change. That it's so all this is like planned. Nothing is happening right now, or are things in, pl in place right now? So we're uh, uh, good. Good question again, and we're <laughs> just uh, we're just about to kick off. Okay. So uh, we're we're running a, p a pilot session, I think, next week, mm -hmm. and then in December we'll actually run the first courses in December this year. December this year, okay. yeah, and those will run all the way through to uh, July next year. Uh -huh. And as part of that as well, we'll also be. Uh, running a workshop and that workshop will be with some of the the, the people that take part in the program mm -hmm. It will be with some of the employers and it will be with the stakeholders because What we really want to do is is make a difference We want to make an impact mm -hmm. and we want to sit down at the end of that and review that and say What have we learned? What recommendations can we then take forward to uh -huh. the Scottish Government, Skills Development Scotland, Scottish Funding Council to say we think we've got some ideas here that can actually make a difference mm. and continue the, the work that we're doing on that front. Okay, so AFBE, AFBE, like, are you working closely with them? Are you, you know, look, I've, I've had um, Oli Falayo on the show before. Yeah, I know, I know Oli, yeah, good yeah. guy. Is he, is he the, the contact person in AFBE? So Oli's the uh, main contact at mm. AFBE. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they've got a bigger team, so they'll have other individuals involved. Yes. And Leslie Laird. I think you might also have had yes, on, I've had on, on the show. Leslie on the show as well. Um, and so Leslie's the uh, the main contact at uh, Equate. Mm -hmm. The other part that's that's really important, and and forgive me if you were going to bring it up earlier on. Mm -hmm. um, so we have five pieces of work within the NTTF program, the mm -hmm. National Transition Training Fund. Mm -hmm. The other piece that's really important is the the graduate program. Mm -hmm. uh, this year we will be recruiting. 50 STEM graduates mm -hmm. who've not been able to find a, a job because of COVID and the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, again, predominantly aimed at those 25 and over, but not exclusively. Mm -hmm. And we will be looking at people who have come from university, mm -hmm. but also those who have come from college with an HNC or an HND. Okay. So we're actually widening the pool a little bit this mm -hmm. time. We are a national asset. So we will be working across the length and breadth of Scotland, given opportunities across there. Mm -hmm. um, and last time, for example, we had opportunities all the way from Cromarty Firth across to Aberdeen, down through uh, uh, Dundee and Montrose and uh, Edinburgh, across into Glasgow and then down into the Scottish borders. And we would expect to be doing the same again. So <coughs> if you're uh, from the, the ethnic minority community mm -hmm. across Scotland, no matter where you are, uh, and you're a, a graduate, you've not been able to find a job. 
um, we certainly be interested in hearing from you. Okay, so I like that. So that segues me right into my next question, which is, so someone's listening today, they're unemployed or at risk. They're from the ethnic minority background, Afri African community here in Scotland or any other underrepresented group here in Scotland and they want to be a part of this. They want this opportunity. How do they reach you? What do they do? Do they go? <laughs> How do they, what's the first step? So there are two first steps. Um, okay. One, we are just about to, to undertake a marketing campaign. Um, so what I can tell you is keep watching the, the Jambo Radio website um, because we will post the information <laughs> there. Okay. Um, and also check out the Enmis website because we will be posting the opportunities there as well. Okay. And on social media, other social media? Yeah, we'll be going through all the social media, uh, yeah, your LinkedIn and then wh whatever other goodies that our, our marketing team can uh, can okay. bring to so the you air. just wait. They can't contact you beforehand. Just wait for the marketing campaign to start. No, but they can't pick up the phone. Go to the website. They can't do any of that. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> yes, I guess. I mean, I guess they could. But but in effect, um, we we're just putting the finishing touches on on what that looks like. We've started mm -hmm. the soft launch with the employers. Mm -hmm. So we're actually gathering the employers. The, the key thing with this is that. We, we obviously we need to create the places with employers first mm -hmm. uh, and then when the individuals come in we can then match them with geographically where they are mm -hmm. uh, and, and also if possible the sectors that they're interested in. Mm -hmm. Within NMIS we are we are sector agnostic so that means as long as it's manufacturing we really don't care. Okay. Um, so that could be food and drink, mm -hmm. it could be fintech, mm -hmm. it, it could be oil and gas, mm -hmm. it could be renewables. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we try and match the individuals and what they're looking for with the companies and the, and the jobs that they're we will available. have available. So and are these only open to STEM, only open to engineering? Open So all of this pro um, fundings and spots and opportunities, are they only open to those in the STEM world? So for, for our part of the National Transition Training Fund, we are focused very much on manufacturing. Okay. So for manufacturing, the, the biggest core will always be people from a STEM background. Yes. Um, that's not to say exclusively. Uh -huh. um, and often what we find is that uh, even people coming from a STEM background, we can give them opportunities they may not have thought of. So. Uh, as an example, we had one of the STEM graduates last time mm -hmm. actually spent six months with the purchasing department at the University of Strathclyde. So they're developing some really useful skills that mm -hmm. when they then go into a manufacturing company, they'll be able to bring to bear all the, the purchasing experience that they've, they've gained from that. Okay. And how important do you think a career in STEM First of all, what is STEM? <laughs> we know what it is, but for the, for the benefit of those who don't know, that's, I'm going to, correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> that's science, technology, engineering, and manufacturing? Mathematics. Mathematics, sorry. Yes. Almost good at that. It's almost like a dirty word, but um, maths is, is useful. Uh, so, science, technology, engineering, engineering, and mathematics. That's STEM. Yeah, I, I would add to that, you know, many young people uh, maybe not, not like maths, Mm -hmm. um, and so often people who are really good and could be really good in the, the engineering and manufacturing run community away from it. run away from it because they think I don't like maths it's all about maths like Serena she ran away from it it's not all about <laughs> <laughs> Serena is really good at maths she was like uh, weren't you like a maths like genius or something in high school right I wouldn't say genius <laughs> <laughs> but you were really good no I was good at maths mm -hmm. yeah yeah and did you find it, was it in your, um, in your experience, people ran away from maths as soon as they could drop it or as soon as they didn't, or they didn't work that hard at it? I feel like with maths, it's easier to get frustrated. Mm -hmm. And that's why people give up mm -hmm. because they just don't get it right. Mm. But they make it compulsory. Almost all schools make mm -hmm. it compulsory, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. the, the challenge is, you know, that, that if, you're, if you're a real hardcore engineer, mm -hmm. um, you, you will use lots of maths. But actually, within engineering and within manufacturing, there are lots of jobs where you don't use maths. I don't, I don't use maths day to day. Um, but also, there are lots of opportunities that people might not think are there. Mm -hmm. uh, so just to give you an example, we had two of our um, female engineers uh, this week filming at the Lightweight Manufacturing Centre. So that's a part of Enmis that's all about um, composites and, and lightweight materials. Mm -hmm. 
um, and and so we had a cr film crew over there working with Skills Development Scotland. Um, two of the the female engineers, one's working as a quality uh, manager, and one's actually working in my team developing skills programs. And uh, you know, if you're a young person, you're maybe not thinking, "What's that? That's not anything to do with engineering or manufacturing." Mm -hmm. But actually, it's a key part. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a whole range of different options and abilities uh, mm -hmm. uh, in there. Okay, so what? Why? Um how important would you say an, a, a career in STEM is to someone from, for example, a minority ethnic background? So give me a second. A lot. Let me just build a picture. So a lot of people come here. Uh, I think the new generation, those who are younger, probably will have more opportunities, right? Open because they're going to school, they're pursuing you know, tertiary education and actual careers as opposed to jobs. So these are STEM is notoriously more higher paid. I, I, I believe STEM jobs are... I think on the average higher paid jobs mm. than the average jobs so in order to build a community and build you know a future and actual ac an actual career and not just jobs would you say that careers in stem are quite important to ethnic minority backgrounds i i would say they are uh, you know i guess everybody's got to find their own path but wh what i would say particularly to young people is is not to discount paths to actually look into them and do a little bit of research and you're not doing that research for anybody else, you're doing it for yourself mm -hmm. uh, to understand what are the skill sets you have, what are the kind of things you like doing. We know lots of young people, for example, like solving problems, um, but some way through the kind of school system, they actually lose that and they, they, they tend not to follow STEM careers. Mm -hmm. But actually, there's lots of opportunities there. And in fact, you know, with everything that's happening in the world just now, with, with um, and obviously we've just had COP26, but... Mm -hmm. With everything we know is happening in the world, we need more prob people who are going to come along and solve problems. Mm -hmm. And some of the huge engineering manufacturing problems we have, we, we need people to come forward and help us solve those problems, mm -hmm. to look at things in a different way. And how do you catch them young? Because a lot, as you say, a lot of young people shy away from certain careers or certain paths or math, mathematics or science or, you know, they go for the easy way out. Um, they want to be footballers, they want to be <laughs> TikTok stars. But what do you, how do you get, do you go on career days to high schools, do you do things like that to get them young and explain to them what STEM is and encourage them to pursue a career in engineering or in, in STEM? Yeah, so I, 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 I will answer your question. I okay. would point out before I answer your question fully that it, it's not just about young people. Mm -hmm. We need people right across the board. Okay. So we need people who are in their thirties and forties mm -hmm. who have maybe never thought about a career in engineering manufacturing, or in their fifties or sixties to say, yeah, why maybe not? there's opportunities for me in there, mm -hmm. and go and have a look. Mm -hmm. And some of what we're doing with AFBE and and Equate Scotland will help them to to do that. Mm -hmm. In terms of the schools, we, we've got lots of activity going on in, in terms of engaging with, with schools. Uh, I'm actually going out to a, a school uh, next week or the week after. Um, and we've got, in December, we're actually working with a couple of big employers. So we're working with Talis, with Rolls-Royce, with the Royal Navy and with the RAF. Um, and they're working with four different high schools in, in uh, Glasgow on something called Green Power. Uh, and that's where th groups of children from those schools that maybe don't have the same opportunities as others mm. are actually going to be building an electric go kart. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and so at the end of that, they will be uh, they have the, the opportunity to race that electric go kart. Oh. And that's you know just an example of trying to encourage young people in. Mm. <coughs> I remember some years ago going to a school with uh, it was a three D printed spanner. And if any of you. 3D printing is a lot more common now, but yeah. effectively what you're doing is, if you think of a, a printer that prints on paper, mm -hmm. it just does that, but over a number of layers and actually builds Build up a three-dimensional object. Yeah. And I took a, a 3D uh, adjustable spanner into a, a primary school, and the conversation was supposed to be around about engineering. But the whole hour just <laughs> came about 3D printing because <laughs> the kids were just so enthused, fascinating. so fascinated, you know, and it was, could a 3D printer print another 3D printer? Mm. Uh, could a 3D printer print money? Um, <laughs> You know, if you had a three D printer, what would you do with it? Uh, and uh, these are the kind of conversations that actually get kids to start thinking about things and thinking about things in a different way. And then, then it's the passion, and yes. that's you want to capture that passion. Okay, so do you see light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, for minorities and women and ethnic backgrounds in Scotland in careers in engineering in STEM? 
from the work you do, do you see more, you know, equity and more sits at the table, so to speak? I I think we're we're pretty progressive. I think there's a lot of work to be done, mm -hmm. uh, and I think that that comes from both sides. It comes from government, uh, it comes from stakeholders, it comes from employers, and it comes from individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we all need to do things in a different way from we've done before, mm -hmm. because there are, you know, there's just some serious opportunities out there and some serious shortages. Mm -hmm. uh, we in engineering and manufacturing just need good people. Okay. Um, so if you've got some skills and abilities, um, come along and have have a look. Uh, you know, don't discount yourself. For example, if you don't have maths, um, actually just come along and have a look. And and often what we find, uh, and there's some research to support that. So often, for example, women will will look at a job application. Mm -hmm. Uh, and unless they can do maybe 80 or 90 percent of what it says on that job application, mm -hmm. they won't bother applying. Me. Right. <laughs> I've, I've talked with women who are uh, astrophysicists uh -huh. and have like, you know, two or three degrees not applying for a job because they didn't have one thing that was on, on the on essential that. That criteria. Yeah. Whereas, you know, it's not it's not everybody, of course, but the typical young guy will look at a job and if it, he can do half the things <laughs> he said yeah I can do that job Alex right <laughs> uh, and so then it becomes a numbers game obviously if you've got more people more from any category yes. in, there's more chance of them getting the job whether Absolutely. they're they're good bad or indifferent so yeah. uh, don't rule yourself out find out about it throw your hat in the ring uh, We'd love to have you. And what um, what challenges do you think you're facing with um, the partnerships? Are there any challenges with the partnership you have right now with Equate and AFBE? Is everything smooth sailing? I, there's no no challenges within the partnership. But I think that the challenge is that, that we just we're conscious that there's a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. The the needle in terms of you know getting more people, more women, and more uh, minorities into engineering has moved very very slowly. Okay. Over the past ten or twenty years. And so we're actually keen to do some things differently. We, we want to make a difference. We, we, we need to make a difference. And, and so we're prepared to try some things that we haven't done before mm -hmm. to make that happen. Okay. So uh, I, I like this part. I'm going to ask you, do you have any success stories of any minorities you've worked with, encouraged, um, encouraged to go into this career in STEM or engineering who, who came from a background where they wouldn't have thought about it and then they went ahead and did it and became a success or you've, people you've mentored anything like that to share with us yeah uh, I think there's, there, are, there are many I mean you know the, the engineering academy at Strathclyde was all about helping people that wouldn't normally get in so mm -hmm. um, of course many universities are high demand engineering is high demand subjects but mm -hmm. For for many of the engineering courses at Strathclyde, you're probably looking at four A's and a B mm -hmm. uh, on your hires to get in. Mm -hmm. But actually, the engineering academy they can get in from uh, three B's and two C's, depending okay. on on where they live. So we had many many people from different minority backgrounds who actually thought they couldn't get into engineering, got in. I've went through now. They've now got their their bachelor in engineering or their masters in engineering. Uh, and they're working with blue chip companies such like as... I'm smiling, I'm just so proud of you. <laughs> the work you do. <laughs> 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 such as Airbus or uh, Bombardier or, you know, British Airways. Uh, just a whole raft of of companies. Uh, equally, if I think about, you know, the NMIS NTTF program, mm -hmm. uh, for the graduate program, the very first graduate we took on was... Um, I'll say he's a young man, he's younger than me, so I'll call him a young man. <laughs> But Mina, Mina Hanna. So Mina had uh, Egyptian by by background, um, lived in Scotland for a significant number of years and completed a degree at uh, RGU mm -hmm. up in Aberdeen. And Robert Gordon. Robert Gordon University, yeah, mm -hmm. yep, well done. And Thank you. Uh, just hadn't been able to find find a job. So through the work with ourselves, um, we actually worked with Cromarty Firth Ports and with the uh, University of Highlands and Islands and uh, we paid for a, a placement in a, an organisation they set up called the Powerhouse and that's going to look at um, you know research and manufacturing for the whole um, wind turbine area mm -hmm. up in the, the north of Scotland um, and so he's uh, going to be appointed as the manager of the, the Powerhouse. Oh there. the manager? So yeah. What about um, Rodrigo Saiba? That's another one. Well, Rodrigo was, was someone I was thinking about when you asked the earlier question. <laughs> so Rodrigo came through the, 
the uh, Engineering, Engineering Academy, Academy. Um, had a number of different experiences, you know, worked with uh, Lactalis down in Stranraer, uh, mm. so we know them as McClelland Cheddar, mm -hmm. uh, but they're actually owned by Lactalis, the biggest independent uh, or sorry, family Employer. owned dairy company in the world, it's French owned. Okay. Um, and then he moved down, down south to get his first job uh, and he's actually now been uh, headhunted by another company and he's moved on and, and got a better job with And he, when company. he came to Scotland, I understand, he couldn't speak English. He was he was French speaking, came from French the Congo. Speaking. That's right, yeah. And when high school here in Scotland, couldn't speak English, he was discouraged by his teachers not to, not to follow and to do something very simple, don't try to be complicated, don't try to um, study anything complicated, mathematics or any STEM subjects and and he still managed to get his way into engineering. Yeah, so, uh, and so I think Rodrigo was a very good example of someone that um, wanted to, to do better for himself Yes. and wasn't prepared to accept that there weren't opportunities there. Yes. So he, he looked for opportunities, he kept knocking on doors and he made things happen. He uh, was actually told by his teachers not to to go for um was it to work in a, as a mechanic or work yeah in so a he car? started he started as a mechanic and mm -hmm. absolutely nothing wrong with being a mechanic mm -hmm. um, but you know you got to follow your heart mm -hmm. and he he wanted to do something better mm -hmm. um that, you know that was his his choice of words and, and and he did that and those are those are like amazing success stories for me for some people from ethnic minority backgrounds coming to Scotland or growing up here with certain disadvantages and then. Just having people support you the right you having your idea of what you want to do and having people support you to realise those dreams or those plans for yourself. Yeah, I, I think that, you know the other the other interesting th comment I'll make on that, and again reflecting back to my time with the Engineering Academy, um, my role was about the industry engagement, so it was helping the the graduates or the undergraduates to actually find paid summer placements with mm -hmm. companies. Yes. Yeah, uh, and. And um, we actually did a bit of a test, and we looked at <coughs> excuse me. We looked at um, where where the students came from mm -hmm. in terms of the, the postcodes, and how likely they were to be selected by employers. Now we found that uh, it was actually That's the employers, crazy. of course, didn't know they, they by and large they don't care what postcode you come from. They just want. Good people, They're good people. Yeah, you know, good. they want people who are passionate and enthusiastic and, and knowledgeable, um, and and well educated. And so, actually, when we did the test, we found that employers were more likely to choose people from um, the the uh, what we call the Scottish Index of Multiple Deprivation. So, mm -hmm. the postcodes that we would typically think of as being poorer areas, employers were actually more likely to choose people from those areas. That's interesting. Um, and so, so why why was that? Well, it was for a couple of reasons and predominantly it was about actually the, the passion and the enthusiasm shone through. It was about showing that um, I've got an opportunity here and mm -hmm. I'm not going to let it go. Mm -hmm. And actually I want to prove that I'm just as good, maybe even better yeah. than somebody that's got four or five A's. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that kind of human spirit, that's what we want to encourage. Fantastic. Well, I think we've come to the end of things for today. But I just want to tell if we want to encourage people who are interested, who heard what you have to say today, and are interested in, you know, joining the program or being part of it or getting some funding for what they're doing. How do they reach you? Once again, you've told us before, but please tell us again. So I'm a listener. I'm listening to the show, and I'm enthused, and I want to be part of things. How do I reach you? What do I do? So the uh, the first thing to do is to go and look at the NMIS website. Mm -hmm. um, we often have jobs there. I think we've probably got about five different jobs advertised at this moment. Mm -hmm. um, we are actually looking for uh, an equality and diversity manager. I'll do for it. The <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, Jambo Radio will let you go. <laughs> uh, we're actually looking for an equality and diversity manager for that specific project we talked about. Okay. Um, and, and really of course interested in hearing from anyone that's got those skill sets and abilities. Um, so look at the NMIS website, keep watching the Jambo Radio website, we will post it. We will have it on social media very shortly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I think the other thing is to people is to, to, to look in places you might not expect. Um, there are many, many good universities in, in Scotland. Um, I, I know Strathclyde because that's where I come from, but Strathclyde have almost 4,000 employees. Mm -hmm. So. If People might not think to go and look there for jobs, mm -hmm. but there are always jobs there, and that's everything from from the cleaner through to your kind of academics and your researchers mm -hmm. through to apprenticeships. 
um, and, and within Enmis we're actually we're taking on apprentices as well so we'll be recruiting six apprentices uh, in, in the next um, I think certainly by the, by January so again if there are apprenticeships of interest then uh, keep looking at the Enmis website okay thank you so and what advice do you have in general for our young listeners not just young all our listeners who are thinking of their careers in STEM, you know, they come from an ethnic background, minority background, some maybe some disadvantages there, and they're thinking, I want to pursue a career in STEM. Do you advise them to go for it? Do you advise them to take any every opportunity they have? I, I would advise them to go for it. I'd <laughs> say, you know, follow your heart, follow your dreams. Don't don't be put off. If people tell you you can't do it uh, or it's not possible, just look, talk to other people, find ways to do it, and, and actually by solving those problems what you're doing is actually evidence and some of the things that really good engineers do yeah um, like you know, not all engine not all problems are about solving mechanical or electrical things sometimes it's about the people side uh, and those those problem solving skills are, are really valued in engineering manufacturing and really valued by employers all right and all this saving the world you're doing and all this you know all the amazing work you're doing with people how do you balance that with just your general life in general well, I, th I think you've, you've, you've got to have that degree of integrity, haven't you? And, and uh, you know, for me, what's very important is uh, people, as I mentioned, helping people. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I like to spend a lot of time with my family and, and helping my family make sure that they're uh, doing very well as well. I hear your family's very nice. Yeah, they've nice. got there's some highlights in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are the highlights? Tell me a highlight. <laughs> <laughs> I could point an elbow at the highlights, but go on then. Um, Relax. Go on. Tell us about the highlights. You, you want me to tell you, BB? Yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I do. <laughs> well, so those of you who aren't aware, BB's my wife. No. Uh, and we have two absolutely <laughs> amazing kids as well. So A very are. happy man. Great. I like to. I like to. I've got to say that because she's kicking me on. I the table. literally am. <laughs> All right, I was going to like ask you the two things about you, but we've talked about your work the whole time, so it'd be weird to ask you that. But anyway, tell us about yourself a little bit. About yourself. What are the two things about you that people may not know about you? Um, so probably a few people might know that uh, when I was younger, I appeared in Gregory's Girl. <laughs> yeah. um, I probably had hair about the same length as you've got just now, BB. Uh, those days are long gone. <laughs> Uh, uh, and the other thing is probably again might come as a surprise but when I was little I used to do wrestling yes <laughs> so I actually had one of the little leotards uh, <laughs> happy happy days happy we used to go for competitions and obviously within wrestling you've got weight categories so mm. you'd go for the weigh-in and and Maybe if you didn't quite meet the weight, you'd have to go and run and jog and go to the toilet. And you had to like, lose weight in like moments. You had to lose weight to, to get under the threshold. And as soon as you got under the threshold, you'd you go were. back to your locker where you had your stash of Mars bars <laughs> and cans of iron brew and uh, put the weight back on again. <laughs> Probably didn't help you, but psychologically you thought you were, you thought you were magic. Oh, that's true. Thank you so much for being on the show. <laughs> Usually we're a bit crazier here, but you bring such calm and class to things that we're actually quite... Right, Serena, this is a different energy here. Usually we're like, ah, and you're just so like, da, da, da. And I'm just finding myself really, really calm as well. You have a calming effect. Oh, is that a good thing? I, I, I think so. I think so. I think you kind of balanced me out a little bit. Uh, listen, in manufacturing, there's lots of calm things. There's lots of excitement as well. So if you're on either side, uh, or you just like a bit of both, those opportunities are there for you. Right. I like the way you brought it back. Thank you so much for being on the show.